Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, and I'm entering a new age, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Today, I'm entering the new age and possibly even starting AE2. I've just switched out my Void Ore Miner for my Void Resource Miner, because every Neotech machine needs Mika. I want 6 Neotech machines, and each requires 2 Mika, so I'm getting 12. All the Neotech machines follow the same basic pattern, silver, Mika, machine frames, and stabilized enderpearls. Thermal Binder, Electric Centrifuge, Electric Solidifier, Electric Crucible, and with that, a Trophy, Electric Crusher, and Electric Alloy. I'm going to create a new building for my Neotech machine, so I'll see you in a bit. Behold, my new building. I'm using Dented Coal Coke for the floors, the Neotech Rock Climbing Wall for the center decoration, Celtic Andesite for the corner decoration, blocks of quartz as wall accents and light gray lamps as lighting, with plain and light and clear glass, and white types of stable stone for the outlines. And now all the machines. I have them placed carefully. The crucible, centrifuge, and solidifier all work together for ore processing, and the alloy, which is going to produce molten steel, goes into the electric solidifier. The thermal binder and electric crusher are on their own. Processors and memory modules increase the speed at which and the number of items that a machine processes per cycle. Six single core processors, six memory modules, and two network cards. Network cards allow you to auto output and auto input. Place one in the upgrade slot, and you'll get a new tab, IO config. Hold right click to change the view, and left click to change the sidedness. These three machines together triple your ores. I worked my way up to octa-core processors and stuck one in each of the ore processing machines, and they all now process within 8 ticks. I decided to make an electric furnace from Neotech, which I'll upgrade as well. And now I have a furnace that smelts 4 items every 8 ticks. I'm also going to get myself an electric pickaxe, which will allow me to get lots more diamonds and emeralds. One basic battery, one electric pickaxe, three mining speed upgrades, a pistons, two vertical expanders, two horizontal expanders, and two area of effect upgrades. Last but not least, five fortune upgrades. To complete the job, I need to add the electric pickaxe into the thermal binder with 20 millibuckets of molten tin. I got a bit too much. Two area of effect upgrades, three mining speed upgrades, and five fortune upgrades. It'll take 2,000 ticks, unless I add this octa-core processor. Almost forgot, I need a redstone mining level upgrade to mine things like diamonds, so I had to get rid of one of my mining speed upgrades and put it away. And now it's all upgraded. Now to test it out on these 25 diamond ore. Unfortunately, the AoE effect doesn't seem to work. But I got 74 diamonds, which is almost three times as much ore as I had put down. I found out you can switch on AoE by pressing the Neotech Tool Armor menu key and clicking on the Area of Effect button. Let's try this again. A full 75 diamonds this time. Now that I have access to Neotech, I'm going to start preparing for Applied Energistics 2. Step 1, Flukes Crystals, which are made from charged Sturtis Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone. Combine Sturgis Quartz dust with sand and Fluix dust with sand to get seeds, then throw them both in water and wait several hours. To make my first inscriber, I need Stable Stone, which requires IC2 Basalt, which you can only get by cooling Pahoho Lava. Pahoho Lava comes from lava in a liquid heat exchanger, and I can get rid of the heat with a steam boiler and a condenser. I'll be back soon with those machines. Condenser, steam boiler, liquid heat exchanger. One Ender IO fluid tank, 16 fluid conduits, a fluid placer, and an auto breaker. I'll also need this tank full of lava for my ore processing system, and I'll set this up in front of my base. I'll need a liquid heat exchanger with the orange dot pointing this way, and a steam boiler facing this way, with pressure at 2 bar, and water input at 2 millibuckets. Condenser next to the steam boiler, fluid tank full of water, pulling from the condenser, being pulled out of by fluid conduits into the steam boiler, lava tank on top of the liquid heat exchanger, a fluid placer, water source, and auto breaker, and a drawer with conduit connections. Now all I have to do is set this fluid tank to push. That, and add two heat conductors. And now it's working. Once I have six space salt, I'll have all the stable stone I need to make an inscriber. Turns out I already have six stable stone from my circuit processing system. And now I have my first inscriber. I have channels off, so the first thing I need to do to get into Applied Energy 6 suit is make an energy acceptor. But that requires those pure fluid crystals and pure Sirtis crystals. So, while I wait, I'm going to set up an automatic circuit production system. And by that, I mean forestry circuits, which require the calculator circuits I just started creating. I'll need three carpenters, a reservoir, an algorithm separator, 
several item conduits, several ender energy conduits, and three counting item filters. I'll place down an algorithm assimilator right here, connected to my redstone farm. I'll place down three carpenters and a trash can with a transfer filter set to small stone inside. I'll set each of these conduits to insert and give them all counting filters. On this one, I'll add the requirements for a basic circuit. On this one, the requirements for a refined circuit board. And on this one, the requirements for an intricate circuit board. I'll place a reservoir here and fill it with water and set enter fluid conduits to extract into the carpenters. I'll add power to the algorithm separator and set each counting item filter to accept four redstone ingots. I use my PA wrench to set the algorithm separator to output and now the counting item filter will constantly keep the circuits and the redstone ingots I need in the carpenter at any given moment. I'll set recipes on each carpenter, add another carpenter for enhanced circuit boards, which I'll need eventually, and hook it all up to drawers. Now all I have to do is supply gold, pure surges quartz, diamonds, or bronze. Almost forgot to add power. Thanks to the Meteor Compass, I have all the inscriber presses. I've added another small storage tray here to act as my storage, for AU2 and Neotech. While I continue to wait for those pure crystals, I'm going to make a number of other things that are going to be useful in the near future. To start with, I'll want tons of Fluix crystals. And a bunch of quartz fiber, with which I'll get two stacks of glass cable. Then I'll make two printed silicon, and two printed engineering circuits, and combine them to get two engineering processors, and get my first ME drive. I won't get storage components just yet, because the 4K storage component requires a calculation processor, which requires pure certus. But I am going to get ME interfaces and molecular assemblers. I'll need 10 printed silicon, and 10 printed logic circuits, and 10 logic processors. 4 quartz glass, 10 annihilation cores, 10 formation cores, 9 ME interfaces, and 1 molecular assembler. I'll want some illuminated panels, and an ME interface terminal, and two ME terminals. These will be turned into crafting and pattern terminals soon, but I'll need the calculation processor first. I'll make the four crystal growth accelerators, even though I can't power them yet. You can tell I'm getting desperate for things to do. 32 patterns, pure crystals achieved. First off, the ingredients for three calculation processors. Three calculation processors, one energy acceptor, two ME crafting terminals, and a pattern terminal. One, two, three. A few cable anchors, and some cable facades. One, two, three. Sadly, there's no connected textures, but it's a small price to pay. On second thought, I like this better. We'll put our energy acceptor right here, and our crystal growth accelerators over here. I'm making myself four extra inscribers. I placed them all here in a row to set up my inscriber system. I'll put a chest here, and an interface just under it. I've added an interface to a chest here, with the patterns for the circuits with the two extra items that I didn't add into this system. The items are extracted into the proper carpenters, with counting item filters, of course. And the drawer controller with an external storage bus lets the AE system know when the crafting is finished. While I set up my auto-crafting, I have a 4K ME storage cell in here, just to store the items I need for basic auto-crafting. And here is my inscriber automation system. Most of these conduits are set to insert and extract. This conduit pulls circuit boards, resin, and silicon, places silicon in here, placing the circuit boards in the three middle inscribers, and the redstone in the front of this first inscriber. Printed silicon is pulled from this inscriber into the bottom of this one, and the circuit boards are pulled into the top of this one. Finally, completed processors are extracted from this inscriber and put back into the chest. I'm going to be making a few changes. To clean up the design, I'm going to put all the wires in the back, and use a phantom face to get items in through the top without showing the conduit. Finally, the extract of these inscribers will go into another chest where imports can happen more easily. The last thing to do for this episode is set up the rudimentary crafting processor. Only two crafting units, a crafting co-processing unit, and 1k crafting storage. Down I go, into my sub-basement. This is going to be for all AE2 auto crafting and for Tech Reborn. This is small, but for now, it'll have to do. Down here, I've set up my first molecular assembler. This position is, of course, temporary. Once I have a pattern, I can place it into this interface terminal on the molecular assembler interface. And that's it for today's episode. Next episode, I'm going to set up more auto-crafting. As always, I'd love feedback on what I'm doing. I hope you enjoyed.